um, uh, and the basic the the the, the idea of the uh, of the panel was more or, more or less to discuss about your thought about new mathematical theories uh, within your fields that you think we should invest on from an industry perspective if you had. So before going that, what I did rapidly for the audience, I went, I went uh, there are two things I did, is, is look at uh, what we call uh, basically the important mathematical problems uh, that were posed uh, in the last century by Hilbert. As you know, there was the 23rd problems of Hilbert in the last century. And then I looked at what were, and which are, by the way, shaped all the mathematical research uh, around the 20th century for people who are interested in that. As you know, many people try to, 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 to at least solve the Graal uh, during the 20th century. And it turns out that uh, uh, in 1998, so a couple of years ago, uh, there was also the will to define what were the 20 Hilbert problems of the 21st century. So I think it was the, the mathematical union of mathematicians who asked uh, Smales to, to, to put into place what he thought were uh, basically the most important problems that we should solve within this century. So it was qu I was quite surprised to see that many of the pro I mean, some at least of the problems that are there are in fact problems which are quite useful for our ICT business, basically. Uh, so these are the problems and then I went into looking exactly at the PDF he wrote, just to take a look. And it turns out that if you can see, and this is also maybe, I don't know if it's a change in the mathematical, I would say, research realm of, of, of the things they're doing. So the Riemann hypothesis came as, as before. The, the Poincaré conjecture is still there. It has not changed. Then there's problems of complexity coming in, which I think are, are very important. Uh, for us, as you know, algorithmic uh, people, where we're trying to find some solutions with low complexity. So does P equal NP is still is, is there, at least. Uh, there's also um, here in integer zeros of a polynomial of one variable, which uh, from my point of view, um, we haven't still found any urgent need, but maybe there we in. Height bounds for the Ophine curves. I encourage you to look at them. Uh, so another thing which is quite surprising is that these problems are also quite understandable. I mean, you can take a bit of time for research engineers, which uh, is not the case of the things I found in the Hilbert problems. <laughs> so for some reason, I don't know if the level of mathematics in industry has increased or there's a change, but in any case, it's something that is readable, at least in terms of understanding what they're talking about. The solution is another is another is another question, but at least uh, we we understand what the guys are aiming for. The infiniteness of number of relative equilibrium and solicit mechanics, uh, which also was not of, of big interest for us. Distribution point of points on a two sphere. There are some applications um, I can spend on time, but not here, where we can find some application of of, of this conjecture. Um, introduction of dynamics in economic theory which is also something very important. And it turns out that this also is of a practical problem for people looking at equilibria stuff uh, and, and, and things, as you can see here, um, uh, extend the mathematical model of general equilibrium theory to include price adjustments. It's the first time I can see that, um, um, I would say, strong uh, conjectures or strong problems are put into place like that, where there's uh, practical meanings, where price adjustments are there. Linear programming problem, big issue for us as you all know, uh, still for industry in, in, uh, in trying to solve some optimization and here you can see is there a polynomial time algorithm over the real numbers which decide the feasibility of the linear system of inequality AX higher than B. So I'm quite surprised that, that uh, at least uh, then the closing lemma, I'll finish all this, one-dimensional dynamics generally hyperbolic. Centralizers of deformism, deformorphism. Hilbert's 16 problems, still there. Lorenz attractor. Navier-Stokes equations, still there. <laughs> Red stay not still there, but at least a, a big issue. Solving polynomial equations, so wait a minute, the Jacobian conjecture, solving polynomial equation, as you can see here, uh, can you solve, uh, uh, 
Can, can a zero of n complex polynomial equation in unknowns be found approximately or on the average in polynomial time with a uniform algorithm? You have to know that these recent years there's been a lot of, of, of work on this and they found some solution on average, I think. There, there's a couple of solutions now, but not on a deterministic point of view, but on a probabilistic point of view for, for solving these things. There's been a couple of work these last year. And one which is also very interesting is the fact that also alt artificial intelligence kicks in and at least uh, 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 basically in, the, in the, what they call the, the most important problems of the century with respect to what is the limits of intelligence. So I don't know how, how this is going to be solved, but it's interesting to see that there is a, a will to look at the limits of all the intelligence we're putting also in devices in, ter in terms of these. Okay? So w w the aim I was of, of at least this, this first presentation here was just to show you that uh, um, uh, the fact that... Um, I would say the, the community of mathematicians is working on these problems is also a, is a sign that there's also some economic flavor on how we can exploit these things in the next year. I'm quite surprised that these things uh, um, uh, are now at the level of, of where we also want them, then they, they can be used at least or they can solve some problems that we have actually now. So this goes back to, to my questions that I'm going to ask the, the, the panelists because I'm not here to, to the presentation is um, in your fields, basically, the three of you, where, what do you think are the main mathematical problems or directions we should invest on? Or, uh, or if you have some ideas. So I can start with you. I know you're going in, in, in two minutes. <laughs> or let's start with you if you have some ideas on... on well, I mean, uh, uh, I, can, uh, I can make two, uh, two comments on this list, yes. which we just saw. So, uh, I mean, something which, uh, I mean, from all the problems which are up there, uh, one uh, which is closest to my expertise is certainly the one on the Navier-Stokes equation because that's on a partial differential equation. I do think that this is a very good problem, but I'm not sure whether that's kind of the most relevant problem from the point of view of fluid dynamics. I think in fluid dynamics, uh, uh, one, uh, one of the issues is better understanding of turbulence. And for turbulence, for instance, it might be actually more important to understand the route towards singularity formation in Euler's equation rather than ruling out or constructing a solution in Navier-Stokes equation. So sometimes I think that kind of focusing a field on one particular problem is not always the right, the right thing to do. The second remark was this, uh, this problem on economics, which you highlight. I, I think by now, no, no, nobody in economics would put this up. I mean, this general equilibrium theory of Arrow and De Breu is, I think, I mean, I had some contacts with people in theoretical economics in Bonn is, I think, completely out of fashion. And nobody would think now of extending that to a time-dependent case. People rather think of mechanism design, game theory, kind of these, uh, uh, these subjects. So I think uh, in p partially some of these subjects very quickly date, right? I mean, some of the subjects which Smale uh, put up there, I, I think probably already completely dated. So one should be uh, careful. also careful, uh, careful there. So do we have some new problems coming in by uh, New Helbert? Were, were, uh, were there any 20, 20 problems posed? There's seven problems by the Claymont Institute. Yes. Okay. And in the seven, so there, there were seven problems. Uh, uh, so $1 million problems given by the Claymont Institute. And so I think you had the Riemann hypothesis, you have a Poincaré conjecture, you had Navier-Stokes, P versus NP. And then you had the Hodge conjecture, so it's more on algebraic geometry and the Birch and Sunderton Dyer conjecture, more on number theory. Uh, maybe I'm missing some of them, but I think maybe uh, it's okay. uh, Mills. so. And your Mir theory, yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, yeah. so in, in fact, those, 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 those problems that, would, that were put at that time in 1998, there are a couple of ones which were out now, or are out now. That's my, that, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't claim any authority, but it's my gut feeling that uh, that might be the case. Okay. Okay, in your case, uh, Jean-Claude, do you think in your field, basically, what are basically, you think, the new needs in terms of, of, of research in mathematics to, to solve the, um, the issues where you are? 
I mean, in the list uh, that you showed, uh, maybe uh, two items, uh, but not exactly. I mean, not exactly what uh, I, I saw very quickly in the paper. Uh, uh, there is maybe the one on the points on the two sphere, which has to be uh, generalized, obviously, for us, for the n sphere, and even Grassmann manifold, and even flag manifold. So, uh, and complex one. Um, this is one problem that could be very useful to tackle uh, non coherent communication in many settings. And uh, then maybe the one uh, related to Diophantine approximation. I mean, but not exactly this problem because, in fact, uh, this, uh, uh, this tool of Diophantine approximation uh, appears in our area when we want to, to address uh, uh, the problem of, uh, let's say, uh, multi-user coding, especially, uh, for example, one, uh, uh, one thing that has uh, become almost uh, classical now in our area is the computer forward, uh, uh, which, uh, in fact, is very, I mean, its performance is very related to Diophantine approximation, um, multi-dimensional Diophantine approximation. So there is also the problem of uh, uh, um, interference alignment, but not the one that has been uh, popularized by, uh, um, by uh, sorry, uh, uh, Jafar. Jafar, yeah. But uh, the other one uh, on the real line and uh, all the variations on it. And uh, so that's. Uh, I mean, among all these problems, it, this is wha what I see. Then there are some uh, other tools uh, that, I mean, some other uh, mathematical problems that have to be solved to, for some other applications in our area. This is the one that we discussed with Emmanuel uh, this morning, for example, uh, uh, this uh, problem of uh, uh, s solutions for the for nonlinear integral equations, not uh, not only solutions, but especially some uh, superposition principle, etc. So okay. and uh, okay, so and you yeah. So the, the idea of, of here, what I wanted to do is basically to come up, but I mean we're not going to come up from that panel. Is the same thing as Hilbert there did in the 20th century to come up with a couple of applied mathematical problems for ma for engineering that we can come up with a list. I think this could be a good stuff done by the engineering community where they would highlight you know, the 20 problems of mathematical engineering that should be solved in the next years to help engineers. Because uh, the, the ones which were, as you said, were pure maths, uh, what would be the applied problems that, uh, or at least the, the applied mathematical tools we should, we should solve or conjectures to, to, to move forward in our disciplines, yeah. <coughs> well, um, uh, it, to the list, I would add, uh, I mean, all the open problems in multi-user information theory. It's amazing that the interference channel uh, or even the relay channel is, uh, are still open questions. So, mm -hmm. I, mean, it's, uh, did, I mean, information theory is the basis of, uh, of the industry, I mean, a big share of the industry revolution, I mean, from wireless to, to devices to memories to everything. And the fact that, uh, the fact that some of these problems, uh, so, I mean, information theory is, 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 is not very developed in math departments, generally speaking. And so uh, I think it deserves, I mean, the multi-user version of it and, uh, and, uh, uh, and a lot of problems, uh, which uh, we'll discuss a bit later, I mean, uh, would deserve to be in the, uh, uh, as important, if not more. I mean, the, Physics is changing. The world is changing. So we had, uh, I mean, we have a new set of uh, of questions to look at, and uh, so I think we should include these questions as being the very essential problems. And so, say, multi-user information theory would be a good uh, good example. <coughs> the second one is uh, high-dimensional geometry. So I think it's uh, it, uh, it, sh it starts uh, showing up as being a very important aspect of, uh, of course, in Shannon series, essentially high-dimensional geometry, but Comprehensive sensing is uh, as well, and so I think uh, we we lack understanding of uh, very basic questions in high-dimensional geometry, mm -hmm. and so, but uh, so these would be questions that really come from a very practical motivation of the, of uh, modern uh, 
economy, right? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and physics, I would say physics. Because this is a physics of things, physics of data, physics of communication. And, uh, this is, uh, and so physics goes beyond uh, what we have uh, learned <laughs> uh, about fluids and things like that. We are, there are still, I mean, all these problems. But it seems this list is, apart from the P uh, uh, versus NP story, I mean, uh, makes as if the world had not changed at all in the last uh, 20 years or so. But I mean, uh, so, <laughs> no, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just just one, one comment uh, <laughs> following what you said uh, about multi-user information theory. There is this uh, also uh, another problem um, uh, coming from group theory, in fact. Uh, for example, you know these uh, non-channel inequalities from uh, uh, information theory that has, uh, I mean, an equivalent in coding theory. And uh, uh, you know, the, uh, for example, uh, the aim is uh, to go beyond the, uh, let's say, Ingleton-like bounds. And for this, we need uh, uh, to consider some uh, groups, uh, some very specific groups. We don't know which ones could be, I mean, we have some example, but we don't know uh, which properties they have to, 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 to verify to, to be some good candidates uh, in order to build, uh, uh, let's say, good um, network codes. Uh, you know. so. Yeah, so um, I, I didn't want to quote it uh, too early, but I mean, uh, I mean, large network and network mathematics, I don't know how to phrase it in terms of, I mean, either graphs or, um, whatever stochastic network of whatever kind, I mean, everybody has this definition. But this is, this is the essence, essence of reality to nowadays, of social mm. networks, of uh, communication networks, wireless network, wireline, internet, mm. uh, uh, all social interactions are in terms of these objects. I mean, how is it that we, we didn't even see the world graph in the, uh, but understanding <laughs> Understanding the, the, the mathematics of graphs in, uh, in anything that goes beyond what has been done, and there is some structure in there as it, it starts uh, showing up in, uh, in the work of Aldous. Or, mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, this seems to be absolutely uh, fundamental. And so I, I would find this list uh, very interesting, and, uh, but I mean, uh, sort of oblivious or, uh, of, of the fundamental evolution of our societies. I mean, the world has been changing and in a very dramatic way. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, if mathematicians don't want to 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 address this reality, I think uh, everybody loses, uh, the mathematicians on one side, but also also the community, because it it means that because these things are sort of man-made, you can't do math on them. Oh. But there are structures which are fundamentally mais, present mais, there, mais, right? Mais la that, uh, but could you formulate a question in this area? Because it's more or less evident that it will be the, uh, a topic for the future and a lot of people will work, but it's maybe more difficult to uh, isolate uh, uh, a single question which will be the center of activity. So if you have an idea, it would be very interesting. Yeah, in the first set of questions, I mean, uh, we quoted the relay channel and the, and the, uh, and, and the uh, uh, interface, interface channel, interface. okay, and we can quote a few others uh, which are, uh, have been open for a while and for which there are some results. And, uh, uh, yeah, because the solution <laughs> is mainly in the question. So if we can formula formulate <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a nice manner the question, then, then we did half of the work. And I think this is the main problem when we try to list mathematical um, problems that can solve our engineering is, is to find what is the mathematical problem in the right manner. But I agree with you that the basic of the networks would be the relay and the, the, the interference, then you can, up, you can add it up. Well, uh, when, uh, when Maxwell wrote his equations, uh, would anybody have said, uh, uh, please uh, think of how to formulate uh, <laughs> Maxwell's equation. I think things don't work that way. So I, I, I just, I mean, would say no. things. That's that would be my answer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think also that these non-channel type uh, inequalities, <laughs> these non-channel type inequalities for more than three variables is very, I mean, uh, something very important because uh, it's. Uh, uh, it's not easy to understand where they are coming from, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, the uh, when the number of variables increases, so when your network increases, then uh, there are m many more, many more, and uh, so. Yeah. Okay.
Uh, so another point, uh, the question was uh, the another question of the, of, the, of, the, of the panel was about are we asking too much to mathematics? Well, I put in this question. I didn't bring the document, but but I I um, I, I went through the the, the the document of H twenty twenty as you know, which which is basically the vision of the EU for 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 the two thousand twenty, and um, you just run the the one term which is progress and the other term which is innovation. And, and if you look at w progress of the society, you look at the number of the word progress which is put in that document is very few. If you look at the number of times innovation is cited in it, it's incredible. Which means that we're, looking, we're pushing much more and more people to have results in a very quick manner in the sense of, of advancing uh, the impact on the economy. And I know there's been some studies, I think, I don't know if it was done by Cédric or who, about the impact of mathematics on the GDP. It turns out that, uh, so I don't know if it's true, you, you, can, tell, you can confirm afterward, you have to know that 15%, so f mathematics have an impact on the French economy of the order of, on the GDP, on the GDP growth of the order of 15%, which is quite huge from what I saw. I mean, 50% of one discipline having such an impact is quite huge. And the question, and if you see also in, in this H2020, uh, we're looking not more into doing a progress of the society, but having really innovation behind, meaning good things. So do you think, and, and I see also by the pressure that we're having to get more and more results rapidly for mathematician that can be translated into something. Do you think that we are overdoing it towards what we think of, can, of what mathematician can bring us? Or do you feel comfortable with that? Let's say, you, as an academic, do you feel comfortable with the situation? Did you see a change in the fact that um, you are more and more connected to industry now than before in your work or not? Although you are always in INRIA, so. <laughs> He's not maybe the best guy. I, I should ask a guy from YASHOS uh, uh, to, to answer this. I mean, for, for my own work, I'm not able to answer because uh, uh, I'm really not more and more involved uh, with industry. So yeah, but you get some requests now that mathematics should have more and more impact, not on doing uh, the progress of science, but having an impact on innovation. Because I mean, from the documents I see, this is exactly what we're requesting more and more from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from mathematics. I mean, it's an issue for finding the funding of an institute like uh, IHES, but... Uh, uh, I, I don't, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> f from my point of view, I have to defend the idea that uh, it's crucial to uh, maintain a very high level of uh, theory to be able to develop a very high level of uh, application. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and it's not uh, something completely, uh, uh, admitted uh, easily, but uh, yeah, it's a kind of thing I have to have advocate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> would have the same view and would spell it a, a bit uh, um, differently. Uh, I think uh, so, especially young people should be encouraged to take risks and to do things which will be used 15, 20 years after they do it. And if you put the bar uh, in terms of popularity with uh, whatever f uh, metric, <coughs> and uh, if you insist that people collaborate uh, with uh, industry through external matters, you just kill the system. Okay. Maybe I have just one uh, small story. Um, it's not exactly about industry, but uh, it is uh, the relation between, uh, let's say, high theoretical mathematics and uh, applications. And uh, some years ago, maybe six, seven years ago, I don't remember very well, uh, I was still in telecom at that time, and uh, <coughs> I was contacted by Leila Schnapps, uh, who wanted to, uh, to renew, um, I don't remember exactly what it was, it was a European project on um, you know, Galois theory, la grotte and Dick, so that's uh, something very, very theoretical. And uh, they asked them, they asked her, I mean, the, the uh, probably the one who, who were responsible of the, <coughs> uh, 
of uh, let's say uh, uh, the financing this uh, yeah, project the, the uh, they, they, yeah they, they, they ask her in fact to find some applications of it and so uh, and uh, she so she went to me to find to, to try to uh, ask me if I wanted to be part of this but finally I said yes but of course, uh, I was. It was uh, something that I didn't understand very well, and uh, so I didn't do anything. So, but uh, at that time, there was. Uh, I mean, uh, th that uh, th this, uh, this e even this uh, highly theoretical project had uh, to to demonstrate that uh, there could be some application. Uh, uh, in order to, to, to be financed. Yeah. Okay, but vice versa, I think you can also get some very interesting problems yes, to yes. solve from the applications where you're involved with yeah, yes, people. That, huh? yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah so I think uh, uh, what uh, was said before uh, is, is the right thing. So uh, when something is born and that people would come and try to, to exploit it is one way. The other way indeed is talking to industry on a point-to-point -point way and learning about difficult questions mm -hmm. and working on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it, it happens, uh, it used to happen in Europe, I think it's vanishing because of this 8-20-20 nonsense, let's call it by its name, uh, where you essentially uh, push people to to meet and act jointly, <coughs> even if there is no substance. Yes, yes. I think it's a dead end, <coughs> and uh, 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 NSF doesn't go this way, it goes still individual grants mm. to individuals who are taking risk and doing the right mm. thing. Mm. Europe is going the wrong, the wrong way, and we should say it, um, uh, we should say it clearly, and uh, I'm ready to say it uh, anywhere, anytime, but I don't think the European uh, Commission is doing the right thing in terms mm. of funding uh, uh, research. Uh, it's not the way it should be done, and uh, uh, other continents or countries do differently. We should uh, look at how NSF works, which was properly. Uh, and so I pretty much would prefer that uh, we go by point-to-point -point interaction with industry, asking questions, interacting with industry, as many of us do, uh, and learning about problem thinking and, and, and slowly developing a way of thinking that in the end will, uh, will give answers to industrial needs other than going to things which are of no content, right, essentially mm -hmm. uh, by nature, uh, and prevent uh, uh, young people to take the right risks. So point-to-point uh, -point interactions with industry are, are the right way. These collaborative things, uh, to me, is, um, I mean, it's just not what should be done, mm -hmm. and it's not like that that uh, things work in the US, and they work, I must say, well better in the US than in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, real interaction between industry and academia. Mm. And I think the cause of that is the, the way H2020 and its predecessors have been, uh, have been uh, uh, working, yeah, yeah. right? Mm. Putting the emphasis on what should not be the emphasis. Uh, so, um, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's easy to, to, when there are good uh, research groups, to, to create this point-to-point -point interaction by direct funding from industry to, to academia, and that's how it should work, right? Uh, and uh, I think it's much more developed. This is vanishing in Europe. I used to work with Alcatel. Uh, we designed some uh, some uh, architecture, the DSL architecture, with them uh, in the uh, year 2000. And then well, there was this big European project. They said, "Well, why don't we make a big project? Uh, mm -hmm. Twenty of us with their competitors." And the thing collapsed. So the uh, I think point to point is disappearing. Uh, therefore, this way of uh, uh, asking fundamental okay. questions to the right academic is disappearing, uh, and these projects don't work correctly. So young people who are bright are disappointed, uh, and they go elsewhere. Mm. So that's as simple as that, and so we should say it. Thanks. Uh, I had a, a, another couple of questions, but I think the time is running. Um, uh, I'll just ask the people around if, if they have some questions uh, to ask to the panel. No questions? Okay. So uh, I'd like to, I mean, in Huawei, we're trying to do it point to point, by the yeah. way. Uh, <laughs> just for information, and that's the, 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 scheme, know, the, the, the scheme we're doing with all, we're trying to identify the prestigious researchers 
uh, around the globe, at least for us it's in Europe and in France, and trying to, to create a point-to-point -point link by inviting people and, and, and trying to produce a document of research together on our, on our, on our problems. In any case, I'm very happy. I'd like to thank you. The two others went, went away. And I hope uh, also from EHUS point of view, we will have the opportunity to continue working together. Uh, I know we identified somebody there uh, in, in, that uh, we're going to welcome to talk to us and give a talk at our place so we can maybe see how we can apply these, these new results you've been, uh, you've been producing. And I hope we're going to have also another successful next year uh, workshop. Uh, the bus is waiting for you outside. And thank, uh, thank you all for coming and staying until 4.30. OK, bye.